Hello and welcome to lesson 5-6. Today we're going to look at what we call inverse variation. By the end of the unit we're going to look at solving inverse variation equations and we're going to compare them to direct variation as well. So to begin with, by definition inverse variation says an equation in the form of xy equals k or my preference y equals k divided by x where k is not equal to zero is an inverse variation um, equation. And again, just like with direct variation, the k value is still our constant, and in this case, we're gonna find k by multiplying x and y together. So if we're given an ordered pair, you can multiply those together to find your constant of variation, or um, you might be given other information and be able to solve for k as well. Unlike the linear curve of a direct variation equation, inverse variation actually has kind of like a curve to it. And if you look at this right here, you have like your green line, you have your blue line here, and your pink line. And the, the smaller the number, kind of like the closer to the x and y axis these graphs are. The larger the number, the farther it gets away. So anytime you have a graph uh, that has like this kind of a shape, you should know that this is inverse variation. Now the examples are going to be similar to those of direct variation, except we're going to use the inverse variation equation. So for example one, it tells us that y varies inversely with x, so I know that y equals k divided by x. We want to write an equation for the inverse variation. So here, for this first part, and I'm going to call this part a, I'm going to plug in the 7 for my y equals I don't know what k is, and I know that x equals 5. In order to get k by itself, I must multiply both sides by 5. So this tells me then that k is equal to 35. So my final step is y equals 35 divided by x, and this is my final equation. Likewise, for part b, I have 9 for my y value, equals k divided by 2. If I multiply both sides by 2, my 2's cancel. This gives me k equals 18, and I now have y equals 18 divided by x. And for my last equation here, um, I'm told that y is equal to 3. I don't know what k is, my x is 4. I want to solve, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. And this is going to give me k equals 12. So now I have y equals 12 divided by x. Now this is very similar, this is the second part of example 1. I'm now given a coordinate point though, instead of uh, being told directly that x equals this and y equals that. So the only thing you have to remember is that the first number and a coordinate point is your x value, the second one is the y. So really I have 6 equals k divided by 4. I want to solve for my k, so I multiply both sides by 4. And this gives me k is equal to 24, or y equals 24 divided by x. And then for my last coordinate point, I have 10 equals k divided by a negative 2. We're going to multiply both sides by a negative 2. Oops. Uh, sorry. Um, so I'm going to go multiply that by a negative 2. These are going to cancel. k equals a negative 20. So I have y equals a negative 20 divided by x. Now for example two, it says each pair of points is on the graph of an inverse variation. So y equals k divided by x. Find the missing value. So again, I'm gonna have to start out with the complete data set before I can go and solve for the y value. And I'm gonna use that complete data set. So I have nine equals k divided by five. And I do this so that I can solve for my k. So I multiply both sides by five and find that k is equal to 45. So now I know that my equation is y equals 45 divided by x. 
So for my y value from this coordinate point, I have y equals 45 divided by 3, because I'll plug the 3 in for x, and I know that y then will equal 15. Likewise, for part b, I'm going to use the full point, which is 3, 8. So I have 8 equals k divided by 3. If I multiply both sides by 3, I really have k equals 24 or y equals 24 divided by x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that second point here so I can solve for y. So I really have y equals 24 divided by 2, which equals 12. And finally, for part c, I have 6 equals k divided by 5. Multiply both sides by 5. And I have k equals 30, or y equals 30 divided by x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in what I know. So in this case, I'm solving for x, and I know that y is 10. So I have 10 equals 30 divided by x. Now this one is a little bit tricky because I need to get x in the numerator. And right now, x is down here in the denominator. So I am going to multiply both sides by x. And what this does is this gives me 10x equals 30. So now I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 10 so that I can go ahead and get x by itself. And I'm told now, or I can see, that x is equal to 3. For example 3, it says the weight needed to balance a lever varies inversely. So once I see that it varies inversely, I know I'm dealing with the y equals k divided by x with the distance from the fulcrum to the weight. It wants to know where should Julio, who weighs 150 pounds, sit to balance the lever. So it tells me that weight, so I'm going to say weight, varies inversely with the distance. Now in this case, we are going to need to look at the picture to find both a weight and a distance um, relationship. So here, I can see that I have a girl that weighs 120 pounds who is 6 feet apart um, So from the fulcrum. So I have a weight of 120 is equal to my constant divided by my distance of 6 foot. If I multiply both sides by 6, I see that I now have uh, a k value is equal to 720. So I really have weight equals 720 divided by a distance. So in order to find out where Julio should sit, remember he weighs 150 pounds, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So I have 150 equals 720 divided by my distance. I need to get that distance up into the numerator. So I multiply both sides by D, which gives me 150D equals 720. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by that 150. And when I do that, I end up with D equaling 4.8, and I'll use a different color here. So 4.8, my unit is in feet. So if he is sitting across from somebody who's 120 pounds, that's six foot away from the fulcrum, and him being 150 pounds, he would have to sit 4.8 feet away from the fulcrum in order for those two people to be balanced. Now for our final example, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to tell whether each set of data is direct or inverse. Okay, so if you remember, direct variation, we have y equals kx, and for inverse, we have y equals k divided by x. And the most important piece out of both of these is their k values. Okay, so if I look at my k values in both equations, I see that k for a direct variation, and I'll put direct, or d for direct, is going to equal y divided by x. 
and this here is inverse, and k then is equal to x times y. So if I get the same k value, whether it be direct or inverse, okay, from my tables, then that tells me that I have either the direct or the inverse variation, depending on which equation I'm using. So what does this mean? If I look up here at this first table, um, the easy one to try is your x, y. So if I multiply these together, so 2 times 35, this is going to give me 70. If I go 7 times 10, that gives me 70, and 10 times 7 is also 70. So I can see that this one right here is inverse because I use this equation right here. Now if I go to the table sitting next to it, or this table, and I go with that same approach, I have 3 times 16, that gives me 48, 6 times 8 is 48, 24 times 2 is also 48, so that tells me that this table here also happens to be inverse. Now if I go down to this table, let me change my color here, if I come down here to this table down here, and again, if I just multiply these, 2 times 9, I get 18. 8 times 36, well, 8 times 36 is not going to give me 18 because that's 288. So based on these facts right here, I know that this is not inverse. So I'm going to go and I'm going to try direct variation. Well, remember, direct variation is up here. So I'm going to try y divided by x. So here I end up with 9 halves which is 4.5. If I go to my next set of data, I have 36 divided by 8. So 36 divided by 8 is going to give me 4.5 if you reduce that. And then I have 72 sixteenths. So 72 divided by 16, this is also 4 and a half. So what this tells me is that this relationship is actually direct because I used y divided by x. Then for my last uh, data set here, um, I'm going to go 2 times 8, which is 36, 3 times 12, which is 36, and 9 times 4 is 36. I personally think the multiplication is easier. So because the multiplication for the k value works, this tells me that this is inverse variation. Please let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will see you guys in class.